Good morning, my name is Mallory Barnes, for those of you who don't know me, and welcome to worship at Chickasaw Methodist Church, and welcome to the online viewers as well. Thank you for being such a wonderful church family and letting us lead in worship today. Being family means that we celebrate with each other, and we share things with each other that are meaningful to us. This summer, our youth and children both had amazing weeks at camp special times of growing in our relationship with Jesus. We are going to share our testimonies today about how we experience the work of the Holy Spirit during our focused time with the Lord. Hearing with understanding can only happen when we ask God to help us hear with an open heart. That is when real Holy Spirit transformation can take place. It is our prayer that every person in this room can hear with understanding. We are also going to share some of the music that we, that we thought was, it were an important part of our camp experience. We know that this might not be your favorite type of style of music, but how amazing is it that, we, that here we are together from such different generations and walks of life. And while we might have different pers per Perseverance preferences, we love, share, and worship the same Savior. So, church, will you stand and sing with us? As long as we're breathing, we've got a reason to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, that has breath. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord.
may be seated. We want to invite everyone to church, to lunch, and church town hall meeting immediately after this worship service. We will have a great hamburger lunch cooked by your Methodist men for, for lunch. After lunch, Terry Smallwood will make a pre presentation about our visual vision leadership team. Then your questions will be heard and answered as we share about our future. We also want to invite you to come to the district conference tonight at Stillwater Church in Saraland. We will have a covered dish supper at 5 p.m. and a worship time that will be led by Gene Watson. We will have a great time fellowshipping and getting to know people from other global Methodist churches in our area through a good dinner and a sweet time of worship. There are, there are more details about this event in today's bulletin. Next Sunday, July 7th, Chickasaw Diners is heading out to Aztecas in Saraland for lunch right after our service. We always have a great time eating out together. If you would like to go if you would like to go eat with the church Chickasaw Diners, please text Phil King or Brent Middleton so the restaurant can have our seating waiting for us. Please stand and continue worshiping with us. Don't 
Before I go into prayer, I wanted to share a quick story. I did get the approval from Dave, so if anybody don't like it, take it up with him. Um, uh, I wanted to share something about prayer that happened with uh, these youth behind me, and they don't know this quite yet because I've been kind of quiet about it, but they don't really know how much this really absolutely meant to me. I'm going to try not to cry during it. I'm going to try my hardest. But So we were at camp, and it was Thursday. And I got a text from my mom, and y'all know I'm three hours away. Get a text message from my mom, and it says, hey, call me. So I call her, and I find out that my nephew is in the hospital, and he had pneumonia. I'll share the long story, but let's just say he had a lot of complications. And if he didn't have that surgery that day, that he would have passed away. So... Of course, when I got that phone call, I was, I mean, you can ask them, our schedule was so tight, there was no reason to sit down and cry, to be honest with you. And even though that they, they had free time as well, they were going to go play a big game that everybody else with, with me sitting there crying and just worried and worried and worried, and when I tell y'all, every single youth behind me put their hand on my shoulder and told me that it was going to be okay, and they prayed over me. I didn't ask. I did not ask. They all did it just because they wanted to. And to me, they don't realize how much that helped me be more confident in prayer as well because they they were confident when everybody was looking. There was 250 people there, and they still prayed over me. So I want you all to know that that really meant a lot. I want to say thank you all to each one of you all for that. So, So let's bow our head. Dear God, we want to say thank you for allowing us as a church to go to camp. I pray that everything that each teenager took from camp, I pray that they apply it to their lives and to step boldly into their faith. I pray that every battle, every complication, every issue, and every celebration, that they put it before you and lay it at your feet. I pray that the excitement for you continues to grow more and more. I pray they dig deeper into your word. I pray that they plant seeds around the community, spreading your word and your love. I pray that you guide them in the right direction as leaders of the next generation. We also pray for the people of our church who are facing health problems. We also remember those who are struggling with personal and emotional problems. We thank you, Lord, that you are the great physician. We ask that you help everyone on our minds today. We thank you, Lord, for the victories in our lives. We rejoice with one another about the celebrations we have in our lives. Help us to know your great joy in our lives. And now let's join us together in the prayer you have taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, who art be thy name, how thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward.
Let's stand for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank for the privilege of giving you these gifts. We ask that you bless these gifts that they may do kingdom work in our community and all around the world. Amen. So I had the privilege of going to Blue Lake as a camp counselor for our three kids who attended. My favorite part of Blue Lake was definitely the arts and crafts station with the kids and them making me tons of friendship bracelets. And I felt most connected to God when I heard the kids' voices singing Reckless Love at worship each night. Now, let's hear what the kids have thought. Good morning. Thank y'all. Y'all look like you had a good time at Blue Lake. That's good. They didn't like seeing themselves in video, but you're really super cute. Thank you for sharing. So thank you for today and um, this gift of us being able to share with you all um, our weeks at camp. You know, as, even as a youth group member um, when I was in youth and then going to camp and leading youth um, with camp for all these years, one of the most disappointing things is when they have these wonderful, wonderful experiences meeting the Lord. Uh, and then, you know, that's that mountaintop experience, right? And, and it's great, and they're so full of energy. Um, but it's so discouraging, like, when they're just, you see them falling off the mountain. Um, it's, it's sad. When they come back, there's no, dis, there's no connection so this is so important that we're sharing this with you all, our church family. It makes it so much more real. And that's like walking them down the mountain, walking beside them as they walk down and showing them that what happens there is connected to here and it's connected to their daily life. So it's so, so important. So thank you for today. Um, I also had a wonderful time at camp. Um, in fact, you know, before I left, people were teasing me at work because they think that I'm not right, that I would take a week of vacation and go to camp with a bunch of teenagers. Um, but truly, truly, I can say, anyone who came and offered me a trip anywhere, I would not trade for that week that I had with them that last week of May. Noah, myself, Ben Sane, um, we all took... Some of the kids are not here. They couldn't be here for various reasons. Um, but we went to real life uh, camp in Mariana, Florida. And I'm not going to say that camp is without challenges. Um, it's really long days and really late nights, uh, early mornings. The mattress is about this thick. Uh, and it's in a, on a bunk when I share a room with, a, I don't know how many youth girl, teenage girls. Um, it's a lot of running around, figuring out where everybody is, and all these things. So it's, I wouldn't say it's relaxing in any way. 
one of the ministries of the camp that we go to, uh, one of the reasons why I love the camp that we go to and have been going to the past two years, they have a ministry with the Florida foster system. And they have a foster child that's placed with each youth group. Um, and they are in the cabin with us. And so one of the challenges is that you're trying to take your group of kids and then you're adding another teenager to the group. So that, and a lot of them, you know, they're not in foster kids without a foster program without having had some challenges. So there's some challenges with their social behavior and some other things. So it's not without challenges. But here's the trade off. We got to listen to really wonderful times of worship. Um, we had wonderful worship music, which they shared some of that with you. Our speaker was actually a former NFL and NBA player. Um, who now runs the Dream Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was just a wonderful, wonderful speaker and really brought a powerful message every morning, every afternoon, every evening. Um, we had wonderful times with that. New friendships formed, definitely. Others uh, strengthened. I also want to share with you a really wonderful story. It's like one of the most Christ-like examples um, from one of our youth um, yeah, I mentioned about the foster children. We had one in our, in our cabin, and we had some money that came up missing. And we searched for that money, uh, and I reassured our, our girl that um, we would find it, we would find it. And I went about and didn't really think about anything more until our little foster girl came up to me crying and admitted she had taken the money. And so I immediately went into fix-it mode. Okay, how are we going to fix this? What are we going to do? Ugh. Uh, she said, it's already taken care of. The person she had taken the money from had, had walked with her to the camp store, used that money, bought the girl something, and then said to her, next time just ask. And that is beautiful. But the other part of that is that girl, our youth girl, never even said a word. I would have never even known that had happened except for the little foster girl coming in to tell me what happened. She did not tell any of our other campers so that it would not impact their view of her. So it was just a wonderful example of, of Christ-like love and grace and mercy. And then our youth, a lot of them um, would stay after worship. We would have worship in the evening time, and then they could leave afterwards and go do things, but a whole big group of ours would stay and stay and stay and just sing and pray and um, until the band finally said, okay, it's curfew, you got to go. Um, but it was beautiful to see them every night just pouring their heart out in worship. They, they hunger for it, and they want it, and it was, it's just beautiful to see that and be part of that. And then the other thing that I love about camp is those middle spaces, like as we're walking to the pool or to supper. Uh, that's when really great conversations happen that we just can't have here because we're busy um, getting people home and doing all the things. So it's, it's really, that's a sweet, sweet time of camp is having those great conversations. Um, we also had, of course, those who responded with recommitments to Christ. Um, Noah and I would go to a morning meeting with the counselors every morning, and our kids' names would always be on there the next morning. Um, so it was really just good to see that they were really responding to what was happening at camp. So who would pick going on a cruise or sitting at the beach instead of missing out on that, right? It's really good. Um, I also had my own personal wonderful experience um, that I want to share with you guys. Um, you know, I'm one of those word of the year people. Um, I, my, my, my life goes in so many different directions. So as the year draws to a close and a new one's coming, I always pray about, think about, really try to ask the Lord to put a word that I can anchor all of the things that I do together. So my word this year, in January 2024, I had said, okay, well, abide. Abide, that's my word. Every morning in my prayer journal, the first thing I write on the top is abide. And I pray for the Lord to anchor all these directions I go to abide. That's my word. Before camp came, I was actually asking the Lord to lead me and um, help me uh, get these kids with our camp experience so that it would be something that would be transformational for their lives and something that we would abide in as we go back to our normal lives. So I was praying that word and asking the Lord every day as we led up to camp, Lord, just that word abide, use it for your glory. You know, just show us how we can use that word as we go into camp. And I mentioned before our speaker is JT, right? JT Terry. Um, and his theme for us um, was every morning and every night we had worship and he, he would lead us in a me powerful message. It was about kingdom growth. 
being faithful with the seed God had planted in us by giving it sunlight and water and good soil, which all represents the word of God. Uh, he used all these various scriptures, parables. You know, it was wonderful. It was great. He gave us this beautiful word picture of a harvest field and how we're given these seeds and how we plant them and grow them um, with being connected together. And so on Thursday, the last full day of camp, or the, that was, he was finishing up his message. And it was that morning, and we always had large group worship, and then we would go to small group afterwards to talk about the message. So as he was finishing up, wrapping up this whole talk on building the kingdom and the seeds that were given, and he was comparing the seeds that were given that, um, that are placed in depth, you know, and that you really care for the fruit that comes from that, uh, the fruit of the spirit, you know, love, peace, patience, gentleness, self-control, all those things that happen. But he also challenged us and said, but what happens with the seeds that you're given that you discard or that you don't care for? And he was giving this beautiful word picture, a powerful word picture of branches um, that are just strewn about on your yard and they're not connected to anything. And you have leaves strewn around and there's, there's no life. It's just something you trip over. It's sort of a mess. There's no connection. And so then he challenged us as we were getting ready to go to small group. And he said, all the big difference between those two seeds is the word abide. And I just, y'all, I'm not a crier, but I just cried. <laughs> that was my powerful moment of affirmation from the Lord. And, of course, you know, he connected to John 15, 5, where Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, those who abide in me, and I in them will have much life and bear fruit. Uh, apart from me, you can do nothing. Uh, so it was a powerful word, a powerful message for me personally, too. Um, so that was my, my crying moment at camp. You have to have a crying moment at camp. Um, but we do have a short video to watch, and there's pictures on there highlighting all the fun. There's a lot of fun moments um, on these videos and on these pictures. Um, you can't really capture those holy moments. There's so many of them, and for one, you can't really take a picture when there's a, a sweet moment, but you can't put it in a picture anyway. It, it's through transformation and, and this right here, sharing and seeing the fruit of all that's taken place in their lives. So as you're looking at the um, pictures, just I ask you to look at each sweet face, and I thank you for the prayers that you've had um, for them and continue to pray for them um, so that connection is there, because this is where the connection happens. All that they learn at camp is connected right here that connects them to Jesus. So as you're watching the video, I ask you to look at that. And then after that, some of them will be sharing with you their testimony and their experience with camp, and I just ask for you to listen um, to what they have to say and give you the give them the gift of that. It's really kind of scary for them. Uh, it takes a lot of boldness to stand up and talk about something so personal. So give them the gift of, of listening to them and encouraging them and just keep praying for them and keep encouraging them and keep loving them as you do. So thank you for that. We have a video. to change things around for just a second for technical reasons. Hi, you guys. I'm Macy Wheeler. I had such a fun and spiritual time at Camp Real Life. I've learned that even if you have very little or very much, take it all. I, I can't want more, and I'm not using all that I have to his greatest advantage. Um, on the on the third day, JT said, those who are faithful with the least will be faithful with the most. Before I heard that, I genuinely thought that I was ungrateful for all that I have. I still am somewhat grateful, but I'm, I'm starting to realize. I'm, I'm more aware of the fact that I have everything, whether I lack what I think I need or not. I, I went... I, I don't know how to swim, and I went to this camp that has lots of water around it and lots of activity that I thought required me to swim, um, but it didn't. On the first day we got there, I was going to try to blob, but um, 
I lied to everyone about the height <laughs> when I actually didn't trust the life jacket and I hate water getting in my ears. The next day I did kayaking and I didn't get out or fall out because I still didn't trust the life jacket. I wasn't it wasn't until I got out of the kayak that I realized that I will be around water all this week, so why not be in the water? I never really act upon my real upon my realizations this quick, but this time it was different. I went to the pool the next day and I finally started getting comfortable with the with my head being underwater. The third full day we had, which is Thursday, we got on the riverboat to Blue Springs and I had the goggles that covered my nose and I had a life jacket. I was finally floating. Like, I could only go somewhere if I swam backwards, but this is progress. I car I carried his saying out of camp, too. I stopped wasting my days with a morning full of sleep and a night full of games and social media. I've been felt that I needed to lose weight and I needed a desk. I can barely find a desk small enough for my room. I got a bin at the beginning of the year, and I can sit on the floor and use that bin as a desk. Sitting... On on the floor, what? <laughs> Sitting on the floor makes me want to get up more. It's not a lot and as effective as going to the gym, but like I said earlier, this is progress. Those who are faithful with the least will be faithful with the most. One of the many things I've learned and and following through with even after I've left camp. Hi, my name is Camille Wheeler. This year at Camp Real Life, I realized, I mean, I learned a lot, but at first I had a hard time understanding the word JT was given. I honestly believe I was in denial until the third morning. I really liked the song of Solomon 8 6. It says, Set me as a seal over your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is a, as strong as death, its jealousy as un. Um, I'm relenting as show, it sparks as fiery flames, the fierce blazes them all. Meaning to love God with everything we have and to love others as we love ourselves. I started looking into that verse more because it's something I need to work on. I learned not just to listen and write down verses and quotes. I learned to look into them and read more about it. Camp Real Life was one of my best learning experiences. The staff were so nice and patient. I would definitely want to go again another year. Good morning. My name is Angelita. My experience at camp was nothing but good and God-filled. The environment was filled with people who were there to worship God and bring a good vibe that felt calming. JT Ter Terry shared many things with us that really pulled me in and made me feel curious for what it meant or felt like. He said and mentioned many things that I hadn't heard of or learned about. During some prayers, he would say, Satan, we bind you. To me, I felt that meant that as we prayed, showing we have a relationship with God and follow him in his lead, we are not letting the enemy overcome that. To me, he was saying that by praying, we repelled Satan by getting between, from getting between our relationship with God. There are many references made at worship, one being that finding God is like finding treasure. Some people actively search for it, as some people just stum stumble over it. Another thing JT said is that whatever comes out of your mouth is what is in your heart, but just because it comes from your heart doesn't mean it comes from God. Seeing what is in the heart is what tells us who is the follower of God. We know the rules and the words of God and what it is, and what it is to be done to achieve our, goal, our, our role as a Christian. We know that spreading nasty words and doing ungodly things is obviously against God's word. During camp, Jennifer had us memorize Philippians 4.8. I remember having my head on her lap as she helped me get water of my, out of my ear and she had me say it out. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Jennifer followed this with, if it's not that, push it away. I want to follow this verse with what JT preached. Your eyes are a gift, but can be the most evil things. This is referencing to what is in our heart. JT says, said there were many gateways to our heart, our eyes and ears. What we hear and see is what begins to sink into our heart. So if you're not surrounding yourself with pure, lovely, praiseworthy, and admirable things, push it away before, it's, before it gets to your heart and changes your path with the Lord. Good morning, everyone. My name is Garrison Gardner. Most of you may know me. But for those who do not, I'm 17 years old. I go to Citrano High School, and I do the sound and tech in the back of the church. This is not about what I do here, however. This is about how and what I did at camp. Camp is an experience, to say the least. It's so far away from every day. Like, you don't have all those distractions that you see every day, like, and you can just focus on one thing, God. And that's what's important. Um, we had the speaker, which y'all have heard about, JT, Terry, and he was absolutely phenomenal. And I'll never forget the parable of the seed, which he taught, about us, taught us about, um, where sometimes there was, this, there was this farmer who spread seed. Some ended up in rocky soil. Some ended up in sandy soil. Some got eaten by birds. Some got twisted in thorns. However, if you get that seed and it's in the right soil, you get it plenty of sunlight plenty of water, plenty of oxygen to grow, it will become a beautiful, beautiful tree. And this was in relation to someone's relationship with Christ. That's what I'd say this year of camp was like, if I had to sum it up. It was improving our relationship with God, allowing him into our heart, letting us have that perfect soil. And in that, we can have the perfect relationship that we all need. Thank you all for your time. Um, I'm Mallory Barnes again. Um, I know we just heard a lot of testimonies, so you're a little bit tired of, it's a little bit tiring listening to every single person. So if you need to, take notes on it. You can take notes. It's okay. Um, I have a lot to talk about because I learned a lot, um, and like, like a lot. So you might want to take notes and maybe quick take, uh, take a five-second nap real quick. Um, so you can get back to listening to what God has worked in uh, our, my life, at least. Um, so I had the privilege of two camp experiences this summer. And thinking about it now and reflecting on my notes of, from Camp Real Life, I see so clearly how God was using that for preparation for my time as a camp counselor at Blue Lake this past week. There are so many key points that resonated with me from our times of worship at youth camp. Right from the start, JT caught my attention when he said, no one can lead someone further than they have gone themselves. That made me immediately think about the responsibility I have in my own walk with Christ if I am going to lead the children as well. The next morning, we learned that the work of the kingdom of God is like planting a seed. It is a process. We plant and water the seed, but we are in partnership with God. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul says, I have planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the growth. This helped me to understand while I am working with the kids that I can lead them and teach them, but it is God who must work in their hearts. At our youth summer camp in 2022, Brent taught us about our amazing race, and our focus verses were Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. JT talked about those verses also. I was reminded that the, goal, that the goal in my walk with Christ, the kids' walk with Christ, and your walk with Christ is not to finish first, but to run with perseverance, each of us running our own race that is marked out with us for us, and to finish it well. 
An important note I wrote next to this was, the day you stop learning is the day you stop living. Speaking of learning, we also learn uh, what a tear is. Is anyone familiar with that term? Anyone familiar with the, word, the term tear? We learned about uh, the parable of the wheat and the tares. Don't worry, it took me a good solid five minutes to understand what a tear was. It's a weed for those of you who don't know. But this lesson behind the but the lesson behind the parable was so powerful. It is not our job to determine who is a wheat and who is a tear or a weed. Um, that is for the Lord to decide. Our job is evangelism, spreading the word of God, not eviction. And the amazing thing is, in the natural, the t a tear cannot become wheat, but in supernat in the supernatural. With God, it can. Night three was my favorite. Maybe because he told us that morning he was going to talk about soil, and I felt pretty smart that I had guessed exactly what parable he was going to teach us. Can anyone guess what that parable was? Anyone want to take a wild guess? No? Okay. It was a parable of the sower. It was found in, it's found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The sower's the sower scatters seeds in four different types of ground. The hard ground, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and the good ground. We were war warned about having hard hearts with no depth. We don't want a surface relationship with God. We can't have the benefits of Christ, but not the intimacy. You can't have his hand and his help without his heart. And you should never be too busy for God. I have heard this parable all my life but I heard with understanding that night. The potential of the seed. Look up here at all of us, all the youth. You all must see the potential in all of us to allow us to be here today, leading in worship service, and especially Pastor Dave, letting us interrupt one of his sermon times. You pray for us and you encourage us. Inside every seed is a forest. Isn't that a powerful word picture? Inside every seed is a forest. But God, in his wisdom, doesn't give us forests. He, give us, he gives us the seed. Seeing the potential in the seed, we water it and we take care of it. And then, in answer to our faithfulness, faithfulness, God grows the forest. Now, on the last night, JT prepared to talk more about the kingdom of God and seeds and growing in God's grace. But he looked out at us and just stopped. After what felt like forever, he walked to the podium and closed his Bible and put away his notes. He looked back at us and said, you know what? The Holy Spirit is leading me here and telling me that this is the message you need to hear. He totally changed the direction and talked to us for the next hour about character and trust and leadership. And he reminded us that our character is who we are when no one is watching and when everyone is watching. It's when our words, actions, and beliefs are in alignment. And he warned us that just because something comes from our heart doesn't mean it comes from God. We can love people, but that doesn't mean we have to trust them. Patience reveals counterfeits, and God is where we place our trust. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? But here's where the story changes when we know Jesus. Here is where we find the good soil. In Ezekiel, we read, Moreover, I will give you a new, a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and help you to live by my rules and carefully obey my laws. Thank you for listening to all of this, for opening your hearts, and I pray not just hearing, but hearing with understanding. Now that I know the difference between those two, I want so badly for that too to happen every time I teach the kids, every time we gather for worship, and every time the Lord is trying to speak to us. Now we are going to play the camp video.
would you please stand as we finish out the, the day with this last worship song? in join us in what we believe I believe in the God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of Father, Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. receive the benediction go with peace go go in God's peace uh, amen all right y'all have a seat real quickly please uh, I gotta check one detail uh, we'll move right into our next segment Hey, wasn't that great what our youth shared with us? So uh, I want to give you a speaking part. And your speaking part is this. We will. Okay? Because I'm going to ask you a question. And if you can answer it, yes. Will you just simply say, we will. Okay? Will you pray for these youth to continue on to persevere and grow in their relationship with God? We will. Youth, will you pray for these folks who enjoyed your testimony so much that they will grow in their faith? Excellent, excellent. I've been listening to youth testimonies since I was 13 years old. I have heard lots and lots and lots of youth testimonies, and I am an analytical person who takes things apart as they're coming by me. I don't know if you noticed it, but I noticed 
in these youth testimonies, there was a significant amount of scripture quoted today. I've heard many youth testimonies that were about emotion and friendship and excitement. And there was that too, and that's great, that's great. But there was so much scripture in today's talk, and I appreciate that so much. Let me see, I made notes. Make sure I don't forget what's next. Oh, also, uh, when we were in the process of disaffiliating with the United Methodist Church, a number of you looked me in the eye and asked the question, said, are we going to do anything with the United Methodist Church if we don't stay with them? And my answer was, I don't know, but I hope so. Our young ladies that were at Blue Lake this week, I know the people who led that camp, their elders in the United Methodist Church, and we did work together this week. I make a big deal of it, but I just say we did work together. I know those uh, former colleagues of mine leading that. I know they did a great job, and I appreciate that. It was good. So, yes, that just had to bring that up because I'll never get a chance to bring it up again, probably, if I don't talk about it right now. So as we prepare to go have our town hall meeting, and if you're a guest with us today, you're very much welcome to stay and have a great grilled hamburger lunch. Uh, we want to uh, organize this well. I'm going to say a prayer for our lunch. Then I'm going to invite the people of limited mobility, if they would go this way, go through that doorway, and go straight on back by the kitchen. Uh, the serving line starts by the kitchen. And then the rest of us, who are of more flexible mobility, if you would go out that door, hang a right, come in the door by the Rose Garden, come down the hallway, and then feed in. That way you will have given the limited mobility time to get your plate served. Okay? That's why I'm not trying to be mean to you. Go out the heat. No. Uh, you know, I'm trying to just be kind to our limited mobility people. And I think y'all got tired of my dumb little birthday game I was always doing about if you were born before 1950. You know, I, some of y'all, some of y'all really rolled your eyes at me on that one. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our youth and their love for you. And Jennifer, Noah, Ben, Mallory, and all the good leader, Mia, and all the good leadership they've been giving this summer. And Lord, we just ask that you bless them, that they will just all continue on in their faith. Lord, help us all to hear that call that you have poured your seeds into our lives and we are to make the conditions right. And if we do, you will prosper your work in our lives. Lord, help us just to move ahead and not be slow. Help us not to uh, hold on to insecurities of our past, but instead help us truly grow in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ every single day. Lord, we thank you for this good lunch, and we just ask that you give us a good time together as your family in the Fellowship Hall. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, we have prayer cards in our bulletin. If you had a prayer request uh, and you didn't get a chance to put it in the bulletin, if you fill, well, fill one of those out and give it to me, I'll be praying for you this week. I mean that as your brother in the Lord. So, let me ask our people of limited mobility if... Uh, uh, or lesser mobility, if y'all would just come on, stand up and move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all come on. Come on and go through this door uh, to my right. Walk straight to the kitchen. The uh, table is right there. Come on, come on. That I can't contain, that I can't control. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, 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 we got it. I just ruined a great moment. But <laughs> stop, please. Harold Butts is 91 years old today. I just have to say that. I, I just had to say that. Okay, carry on. Happy birthday. <laughs>
All right, as they start singing, we're going to sing us out, go out the main door, hang a right, walk around by the Rose Garden, come in that doorway, and we'll all have a smooth serving line today.